This is your Tech News Briefing for Thursday, September 22nd. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Last year, China installed almost as many robots in its factories as the rest of the world combined. According to new data from the trade group International Federation of Robotics, shipments of industrial robots to China rose 45% in 2021 from the year before. These factory robots are programmable, multi-purpose devices that can automate the production of electronics and cars and create metal and plastic parts. So why is China investing so heavily in them right now? And what does it mean for the rest of the world? Joining us to discuss that is our Asia economics reporter, Jason Douglas. Hi, Jason. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, my pleasure. So start with, you know, what's the reason that China wants all these new industrial robots? Well, there are a couple of short-term factors, and then there's a big long-term one is probably the best way to think about it. So the short-term one is there is something related to the pandemic happening here, which is that particularly last year when we were all sat at home ordering computer peripherals and pelotons and all the other stuff that we used to get this through the work from home period, demand at Chinese factories just sort of shot up and they had to meet this demand somehow. And so lots of them started putting in robots. The other advantage of robots in a pandemic sense is they can keep operating even whenever all the workers are told to go home because of COVID zero. But those kind of pale in comparison to the really big factor, which is a demographic one, one which has profound economic consequences for China, which is that its workforce is shrinking. Lots of countries' workforce is shrinking as they get older, but China, it's particularly stark. Where are these robots coming from? Japan, mostly. It's one of the world's biggest manufacturer of these industrial robots. There are a couple of very big companies that are supplying Chinese factories. Yaskawa is one of them. Fanuc is another. Kawasaki also makes these industrial robots. There are a couple of European companies that do it as well. But having said that, China's getting better at doing this themselves. So what we're seeing in the data is the proportion of robots that China is manufacturing and installing domestically is increasing each year and has been for the last few years. And the Chinese government has made a big push into robotics. How good are these robots at manufacturing? How easy is it for them to replace these workers? I mean, the robots China is putting in are pretty well established kind of industrial robots, the kind of things that we've probably had in production lines in the US and other parts of Europe and Asia and the advanced world for quite some time. I mean, they're these big machines that can do things like welding, cutting, heavy lifting, and then some sort of very sort of precision type operations. These industrial robots that China is buying so many of are really multi-purpose programmable things. So it depends exactly what you want to use them for, but they can replace anywhere from a couple of workers to maybe a dozen or something. I can give you an example, if you like. So XCMG, which is an enormous Chinese state-owned construction machinery company, they, I think, in their production line where they were making loaders, had managed to replace sort of 10 workers with a single robot that could do a particular job. So they are pretty sophisticated machines that China is investing in, for sure. I mean, from a financial perspective, I would guess that these machines are very expensive to buy. How does that kind of work out, you know, buying these big machines versus hiring what used to be at least cheap labor in China? So what you said is exactly right. So labor used to be very cheap in China. And so if you wanted to set up a factory, you could find thousands of workers and pay them relatively little. And there would always be more people queuing at your door looking for a job and prepared to work for a low wage. That dynamic has definitely changed in China. As we discussed earlier, the workforce is shrinking. The number of people who want to work in factories is is diminishing and companies are finding it harder and harder to find workers. And they're finding that they have to pay them a lot more money to get them to come to work at their factories and to stay there. So yes, exactly. A robot is a good investment. There's a big upfront cost, but the payback, which will come over years and so on, is that you don't have these ongoing labor costs to the same extent that you um, would have done before. I mean, one final thing we should say is the workers that you do employ will be better paid because they will have to do more skilled tasks, such as fix the robot whenever it goes wrong or work alongside the robot and all these kind of things. So it doesn't necessarily mean that a big rise in unemployment will inevitably follow from this, at least in China's case. So we know China's use of robots and automation is growing. What's the picture like worldwide? I mean, how fast is automation taking off globally? One of the reasons that China is moving at such a pace to install these robots is it's playing catch up with other advanced economies. So in the US, Japan and places like South Korea and Singapore, which are big manufacturing hubs, uh, the penetration of robots is much greater. The robot density, which simply measures how many robots there are per 
10,000 workers on a production line is much, much higher. So China is playing catch up. What we're seeing in the data is places like the US and South Korea, Japan are still installing robots at a pretty rapid pace. There was a bit of a blip during the pandemic for reasons that are probably obvious. Not a lot of investment was being made, but things are picking up again. You see it, especially in particular sectors. Automotive is somewhere that's installing a lot of robots, things like telecommunications, you know, mobile phone manufacturers, they need increasing precision to do particular tasks. They're installing a lot of robots. And then places like Amazon, right, and warehouses, robotics is becoming increasingly common in, in those kind of operations as well. I mean, this is a trend that we've been seeing, talking about for a number of years with China's kind of speed beating towards this. What does it mean for the global economy, for global manufacturing? Is there anything new that we should take away here? I think there are a couple of things. One is China is making increasingly sophisticated products, right? So China used to be thought of and still is to a large extent the factory floor of the world where anything cheap and cheerful, anything that needs to be made in huge sort of numbers gets made. So what's happening is China is still developing economically and it is increasingly making more and more complex products. That is also one of the drivers for this speed of robotics adoption. So China clearly wants to maintain its dominance in manufacturing. And this is one of the ways it it believes that it can do it. So that's one consequence for the global economy. Another one, which is slightly more speculative, is what does it mean for inflation over the kind of long term? We have a huge problem with inflation at the minute. One of the reasons we didn't have an inflation problem for the last 20, 30 years is because China plugged itself into the global economy. All its cheap labor and cheap products help keep inflation down. So if China automates rapidly, I think there's an interesting question around, will that help to keep costs down? Will that help to keep global inflationary pressures more subdued again. I think that's an open question. But I think those are the two big ones. So China staying on top in manufacturing and more of an open question about inflation. So I guess we'll just have to keep watching the automation trend for a number of years to see how those two things play out. All right, that's our reporter, Jason Douglas. Thanks for joining us, Jason. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And that's it for today's Tech News Briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.